Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon, Je suis accompagné aujourd'hui par la vice-première ministre Freeland, by Deputy Prime Minister Minister Freeland Lamenti, Mendicino. and Ministers Lametti, Mendicino and Blair. I'm here to give you an update on the illegal blockades and tell you about our first, uh, for efforts to support Ukraine facing potential Russian invasion. But let's begin with the situation here in Canada, of course. Illegal blockades that have been disrupting the lives of too many Canadians. Here in our capital city, families and small businesses have been enduring illegal obstruction of their neighborhoods. Occupying streets, harassing people, breaking the law. This is not a peaceful protest. At the borders in different parts of the country, the blockades are harming our economy and endangering public safety. Critical supply chains have been disrupted. This is hurting workers who rely on these jobs to feed their families. Yesterday, the Ambassador Bridge was reopened between Windsor and Detroit. Our team and I have been working with Ontario and the City of Windsor around the clock. I want to thank the officers on the ground, including the RCMP, who played an active role. We now have a responsibility to make sure that the bridge stays open. With each illegal blockade, local law enforcement agencies have been acting to keep the peace within their jurisdiction. Despite their best efforts, it is now clear that there are serious challenges to law enforcement's ability to effectively enforce the law. On Friday, Ontario invoked a state of emergency to respond to the blockades. This was the responsible and necessary thing to do. Today, to continue building on these efforts, the federal government is ready to use more tools at its disposal to get the situation fully under control. After discussing with Cabinet and Caucus, after consultation with Premiers from all provinces and territories, after speaking with opposition leaders, the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. The scope of these measures will be time-limited, geographically targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate to the threats they are meant to address. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. Here's how the measures we're taking today will help get the situation under control. The police will be given more tools to restore order in places where public assemblies can constitute illegal and dangerous activities, such as blockades and occupations as seen in Ottawa, the Ambassador Bridge, and elsewhere. These tools include strengthening their ability to impose fines or imprisonment. The government will designate, secure and protect places and infrastructure that are critical to our economy and people's jobs, including border crossings and airports. We cannot and will not allow illegal and dangerous activities to continue. The Emergencies Act will also allow the government to make sure essential services are rendered, for example, in order to tow vehicles blocking roads. In addition, financial institutions will be authorized or directed to render essential services to help address the situation, including by regulating and prohibiting the use of property to fund or support illegal blockades. And finally, will enable the RCMP to enforce municipal bylaws and provincial offences where required. This is what the Emergencies Act does. Let me be equally clear 
about what it does not do. We're not using the Emergencies Act to call in the military. We're not suspending fundamental rights or overriding the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We are not limiting people's freedom of speech. We are not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. We are not preventing people from exercising their right to protest legally. We are reinforcing the principles, values, and institutions that keep all Canadians free. Après des discussions avec... Following discussions with Cabinet and Caucus, after consulting the Premiers of all provinces and territories, and after speaking with the leaders of the opposition parties, the federal government has invoked the Emergency Measures Act to complete provincial and territorial powers in order to manage the illegal blockades and occupations. I want to be very clear. These measures will be limited in time and geographically targeted. They will be reasonable they will, and they will be proportional to the threats to Canada's security. The Emergency Measures Act will strengthen and support the work by the police. We are not using the Emergency Measures Act in order to deploy the military. We will not be suspending fundamental rights as articulated in the Charter, Charter of Rights and Freedom. We are not limiting the right to peacefully protest or assemble. What we want to do is protecting Canadians, protecting their jobs, and reinstating confidence in our institutions. Something that's been used ever, but it exists for a reason. Invoking the Emergencies Act is never the first thing a government should do, nor even the second. The Act is to be used sparingly and as a last resort. Right now, the situation requires additional tools not held by any other federal, provincial, or territorial law. Today, in these circumstances, it is now clear that responsible leadership requires us to do this. These measures must be and will be compliant with our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Indeed, the Emergencies Act was created in the late 80s to flow from and uphold the Charter. We'll always defend the rights of Canadians to peaceful assembly and to freedom of expression, but these blockades are illegal, and if you're still participating, the time to go home is now. On a separate track from the Emergencies Act, I want to reassure people that the Canadian Border Services Agency is already turning back non-Canadians trying to enter Canada to participate in blockades. And of course, while we get the situation under control, we'll continue to have Canadians' backs. I want to remind affected businesses that if you're facing revenue losses, support is available through our wage and rent subsidy programs. We know that downtown Ottawa businesses in particular have been hard hit by these illegal activities. In the coming days, we'll be launching specific support for those businesses. I know that everyone is tired of this pandemic. We're hearing your frustration with COVID and even with the temporary measures we had to put forward to keep people safe. I know people are frustrated. I hear it. You have a right to express that frustration and even your anger with the government or government policies. It's something we'll always defend in this free and democratic country. But blockading streets and critical infrastructure and depriving your neighbors of their freedoms is a totally different thing. It has to stop. Tout le monde est fatigué de la pandémie. Everyone is tired of the pandemic. 
There are other ways to express yourselves rather than participating in illegal activities and dangerous activities. As Mr. Duclos said last week, public health measures are constantly being reassessed and we will continue to modify them according to science. In fact, we will be making some announcements on that subject in the coming days. Today, I also want to speak briefly about our support for Ukraine. On Saturday, I spoke with President Zelensky to reaffirm Canada's steadfast support and to continue to do whatever we can to support Ukraine. Durant la fin de semaine, During the weekend, I also spoke to the, uh, Charles Michel, as well as Chancellor Schultz of Germany and President Gouda of Poland. Active G7 response to support Ukraine's economic resilience. Today, we're announcing that Canada will offer a loan of up to $500 million to the government of Ukraine. I want to thank Deputy Prime Minister Freeland for her leadership on this file and underline that this is in addition to the $120 million loan offered earlier in January. On top of financial support, Canada has already taken steps to help Ukraine defend itself, including with the extension of the training mission Operation Unifier. In light of the seriousness of the situation and following conversations with our Ukrainian partners, I've approved the provision of $7.8 million worth of lethal equipment and ammunition. This responds to Ukraine's specific request and is in addition to the non-lethal equipment we've already provided. The intent of this support from Canada and other partners is to deter further Russian aggression. En raison du sérieux de la situation, given the seriousness of the situation and after having closely studied the issue, I asked, uh, I, I told you we would send them arms and munitions. So Canada is joining the United States, the UK, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, uh, uh, Lithuania, the Netherlands and Poland in sending arms. The goal of the support from Canada and our other partners are to, is to dissuade Russia from pursuing its aggression towards Ukraine confrontation with Russia. But the situation is intensifying rapidly and we are showing our resolve. It's important for Canadians and the world to know that Canada will continue supporting Ukraine and its independence, integrity, sovereignty, including its right to defend itself. Merci tout le monde. Je... Thank you everyone. I will now give the floor to the to Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. Merci, Monsieur le... Thank you, Prime Minister. Hello, everyone. Across the, mon the, the, across the world, liberal democracies are being confronted with serious and repeated threats. Perhaps, we thought, perhaps, and we perhaps even hoped that Canada would be spared. For the last two and a half weeks, we have realized that this is not the case. This siege and these blockades are causing major damage to our economy and are harming our democratic institutions as well as Canada's reputation in the world. International confidence towards Canada as a good place to invest and do business has been shaken. Barricades are doing great damage to Canada's economy and to our reputation as a reliable trading partner. The blockade of the Ambassador Bridge has affected about $390 million in trade each day. This bridge supports 30% of all trade by road between Canada and the United States, our most important trading partner. In Coots, Alberta, about 
$48 million in daily trade has been affected by the blockades. In Emerson, Manitoba, about $73 million in daily trade has been affected by the blockades. These costs are real. They threaten businesses, big and small, and they threaten the livelihoods of Canadian workers, just as we are all working so hard to recover from the economic damage caused by COVID. Nous nous sommes battus bec et ongle. We fought so hard to protect Canada's privileged relationship with the United States during when we were negotiating NAFTA. We stood up to Tariff 232, which were illegals and unjustified. We will never let those hard-won victories be tarnished. The world is watching us. Our jobs, our prosperity, and our livelihoods are in danger. That is why our government is acting. We are resolute and determined. These illegal blockades must be lifted. And they will be. Invoking the Emergencies Act, we are announcing the following immediate actions. First, we are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. The illegal blockades have highlighted the fact that crowdfunding platforms and some of the payment service providers they use are not fully captured under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. Our banks and financial institutions are already obligated to report to the Financial Transactions and Reports Analysis Centre of Canada, or FinTrack. As of today, all crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use must register with FinTrack and they must report large and suspicious transactions to FinTrack. This will help mitigate the risk that these platforms receive illicit funds, increase the quality and quantity of intelligence received by FinTrack, and make more information available to support investigations by law enforcement into these illegal blockades. We are making these changes because we know that these platforms are being used to support illegal blockades and illegal activity, which is damaging the Canadian economy. The government will also bring forward legislation to provide these authorities to FinTrack on a permanent basis. Second, the government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act, authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. This order covers both personal and corporate accounts. Third, we are directing Canadian financial institutions to review their relationships with anyone involved in the illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or CSIS. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. This is about following the money. 
This is about stopping the financing of these illegal blockades. We are today serving notice. If your truck is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Send your semi-trailers home. The Canadian economy needs them to be doing legitimate work, not to be illegally making us all poorer. Il s'agit de suivre la... It's all about following the money. It's about putting an end to the funding of these illegal blockades. Consider yourselves warned. If your truck is used in these blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Send your rigs home. The Canadian economy needs them to do legitimate work and not make us all poorer Ill illegally. We will be, we've enforced these, taken these measures after deep thought. I have discussed this with the heads of Canadian banks. I thank them for doing what is necessary to ensure laws are being complied with and that Canadian democracy is being protected as well as our economy. The past two years, we have trusted one another, we've leaned on one another. What we are facing today is a threat to our democratic institutions, to our economy, and to peace, order, and good government in Canada. This is unacceptable. It cannot stand, and it will not stand. Thank you. And I'll now turn over the floor to my colleague, our Attorney General, Minister of Justice, David Lametti.